Okay, so we're going to start a review of trigonometry um, with right triangle trigonometry. So this is usually where people start. It's sort of the simpler way of looking at things, um, looking at right angled triangles. And so you probably have seen definitions of trigonometric functions as ratios of the size of this triangle, right? So typically what you see is you see things like for that given angle there, that interior angle, you see things like uh, sine of theta. And sine of theta is given as the ratio of the side opposite the angle over the long side, which is called the hypotenuse, right? Um, so this C is your hypotenuse, okay? Um, cosine is the adjacent side, A, over the hypotenuse. So it's the ratio A over C. And there's also tangent, tan theta. And tan theta is the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. And one of the things that you'll notice is that's the same as doing sine theta divided by cos theta. Okay? Those are the three basic trigonometric functions. Okay? But there's, uh, there's one other character that usually comes into the play, and that's Pythagoras. So we have the Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem is the statement that a squared plus b squared has to equal c squared. Okay? That's the Pythagorean theorem. And there are lots of so-called Pythagorean triples, examples of of integer values for a, b, and c that fit this equation. Uh, the most commonly known one is, is your 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? So 3 squared plus 4 squared uh, is 9 plus 16, which gives you 25, which is 5 squared. Um, some of you may have heard of Fermat's last theorem, which says that uh, if you go for any higher integer powers here, um, cubes or greater, it's impossible to find integer solutions to this equation. Um, so something special about the second power. Pythagorean theorem, there are lots of examples um, of these triples of integers that fit the equation, which is interesting. Uh, but of course, most of the time, if you, if you choose two integer values, let's say you choose integer values for a and b, chances are c is, is not going to be an integer. It's probably not even going to be rational. It's going to be some square root. Um, this, this was apparently something that was a little bit troubling for, for the Greeks who really wanted to believe that everything could be expressed in terms of integers and ratios of integers. Um, one way to think about the, the Pythagorean theorem, you can think of it as, as a relationship between areas, between the area of you know, a square of side length b, a square of side length a, if you add up the area of those two squares, you should get the area of a square with side length c. Okay? Um, and if, you, uh, if you're curious about this sort of thing, you can do a little bit of poking around online. You can, uh, you can look for, for various proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, these sort of Traditional proof, um, I'm not going to get into the details of the proof, but if, if you're at all curious, um, I think one of the ways that you would prove it is you would, from this corner here, you would drop a, a perpendicular onto the hypotenuse, and, and then you would make some arguments involving, um, involving similar triangles. Um, and so, in fact, this small triangle is, is indeed similar to the original big triangle. Um, 
And with a bit of playing around and, and using the fact that for similar triangles, side lengths have to be in proportion, um, you, can, you can derive the Pythagorean theorem. Um, our point here is not to try and derive the theorem. Uh, if you're curious, there, there are lots of sites online that'll do it for you. Uh, but one thing that we should mention before we move on is that the Pythagorean theorem is quite important for analytic geometry, right? Um, for working on the Cartesian plane and translating equations into graphs, uh, the Pythagorean theorem is quite essential because the Pythagorean theorem gives us a notion of distance. So if you have two points in the plane, so let's say you have a point here, um, x1, y1, and somewhere else, you have a point x2, y2, right? Um, and you want to know how far it is from point 1 to point 2, point A to point B. You want to know that distance. Well, you can construct a little right angle triangle where this side, so we put in that side, that side, right? There's our length. Um, this side length here, delta x, is x2 minus x1. This side length here, delta y, y2 minus y1, right? And the Pythagorean theorem says that if you're interested in this distance d, um, that d squared should be delta x squared plus delta y squared. And so this gives you this familiar distance formula that you probably saw in high school, that you take x2 minus x1, you square it, you take y2 minus y1, you square it, add those together, take the square root, and that gives you the distance. Okay? Um, so that's where that distance formula comes from. The distance formula comes from this Pythagorean theorem, which is really a statement about triangles. Um, now, interestingly enough, um, the distance formula comes from kind of understanding triangles, sine, cos, tan, they, they're all defined in terms of these side length ratios from triangles. Um, despite that, uh, we're now going to pretty much forget about triangles and we're gonna move on and we're gonna think of trig functions in terms of circles. Everything that we do in calculus with trig, uh, we think in terms of, of circles and angles uh, on circles. So we'll get to that in the next video.